To strengthen your understanding of things like saddles that we discussed in the last video, I'd like to draw a profile. Again, this is a side view, and this time the profile we're going to draw starts at our line A, our point A prime down here, and extends up to B prime. It follows this dashed line. Once you see how this comes together, I think you're going to have a better understanding of what these contour lines mean. To draw our profile, first we'll take a sheet of plain paper, and we want to place the edge of this plain sheet of paper right along the dashed line A prime B prime. We're going to hold it fixed there, and then perpendicular to the edge, we're going to draw this series of lines that start at the intersection of each contour with the dashed line, with the dashed line here. So we've got this first one is where the 1500 contour touches the line, and then the 1500 contour, same one, contacts that line over here. Then we've got the other 1500 contour that goes around Bear Mountain, and these others as well. So some of these are fairly far apart and some of them are close together. Now over here at Swift Creek I have drawn another one as well and you'll see how that becomes significant in a little while. Then our next task is to consider our maximum and minimum elevations along this line. I think you'll remember that Bear Mountain had a contour up above 1650 and it looks like uh, this contour on either side of Swift Creek was 1250 so Swift Creek should be no lower than 1200 and then we get up to, there's this one's 1,400, this will be 1,300. So, so as low as 1,200 and as high as 1,650. So let's do that. Here I've drawn those lines. In fact, I've given myself a little bit more. I've gone from 1,100 up to 1,700. And each of these lines represents an elevation plane that creates the contour as that contour intersects the ground surface. Well, with this creates a, a grid. The spacing of the vertical lines is irregular because that corresponds with the contours. But the spacing of the horizontal lines is very regular. So then what we do is we we plot the elevation on each vertical line that corresponds with that vertical line. For instance, this very first one is the 1500 contour crossing line A prime B prime. So I plot 1500 right down here. Same thing over here, 1500. And I come through and I do this with all my points. You can see these high ones up here are 1650. Well, those correspond with the two contours or the two sides of the contour loop forming the peak of Bear Mountain. And then you can see how eventually we get over here. Here's the peak of Lookout Point. And we come down and we've got something at Swift Creek. We come back up and then back down into this creek over here. See that? And then we come back up and it looks like it's leveling off. But what we don't have yet is the evidence of our saddles. So let's see how that looks. When I connect the dots, I have to pay attention to what's happening between the dots. You remember when we talked about a point right here. Well, in fact, let me zoom in. Remember when we talked about a point right here, we said that that would have an elevation higher than 1500 and lower than 1550. Okay, higher than 1500, lower than 1550. So when we draw that down here at between these two points, that 
ground surface should be higher than that. We said right here between these two 1500 index contours we have a saddle and the point the ground will be lower than 1500. So we should see that showing up in our lines. So let's see what this looks like by drawing our lines. Now I've done it rather quickly here, but let's make sense of that one more time. Let me zoom in. And you can see it's just as we discussed a little bit ago. This point right here between the contours, between the contour intersection with line A prime B prime is higher. This point right here is in the bottom of the saddle. See how we're below 1500 right there? And then we come up and we know that the peak of Bear Mountain has to be higher than 1650, but 1650 is the only uh, contour that surrounds the peak. Okay, when we come back down, you'll notice how our smooth line comes through and look here we've got another saddle right over here we've got a small saddle between this small point and then it drops down and then lookout point stands up there prominently doesn't it okay so here we come down and here is Swift Creek and if I recall correctly we've got a contour that I believe crosses Swift Creek right there at line AB then we connect the dots. Once again, we've got a little peak that rises above uh, the 1450 elevation because of that ridge there. And then notice this particular stream, we had to interpolate the contour, interpolate the elevation of this. We know that it's not quite down to 1250. It's actually above that. So we had to estimate that elevation. And one more time, we have a little saddle right here in this area as we approach B prime. So I'm hopeful that seeing these uh, contours turned into horizontal lines and then plotting a profile along AB helps you understand the rise and fall of the landforms as you walk along that line.